All right, welcome everybody to the October 20th Technical Oversight Committee call. Uh, as you are probably all aware, uh, Linux Foundation calls are held under an antitrust policy. Um, so here's the notice of that. If you have any sort of questions, contact, uh, let's see, Andrew Updegrove of the firm Gesmer Updegrove or your legal counsel. Um, the other thing that we must abide by on these calls is the code of conduct, which is linked in our agenda. So we have two announcements today. Uh, the first one is one that you've heard many, many times before. The Dev Weekly Developer Newsletter goes out each Friday to hundreds of Hyperledger developers. Uh, if you have anything that you would like to include in that, please leave a comment on the wiki page that is linked in the agenda. The second announcement that we have is that the TOC nomination period is open. The nomination does close October 31st, end of day. Uh, if you would like to be considered to uh, be elected or appointed to the TOC, please uh, follow the process of the, the nomination process that is linked there in the agenda. Any other announcements that anybody has? No, okay. Uh, so we did get uh, the fabric report in a few days back, and we also got the PACDA report in last night. Um, so I didn't see any specific comments coming in on the fabric one. Um, let me just reload that page here for myself, just to make sure. Um, no, no comments yet, uh, but uh, there are quite a few outstanding uh reviews that need to, to happen uh as far as the cacti one i don't think anything has um occurred there either um no comments yet so we'll leave these both on the agenda for next week but does anybody have any questions on those two reports before we move forward Okay, uh, and then just a, a reminder, if anybody knows anybody who might be willing to put together the URSA report, uh, we are still waiting on that report to come in. We don't have any reports that are due next week. Uh, the next one that's upcoming is the Sawtooth report that's due on the uh, 27th. Uh, so I guess it is due next week, but yet we won't um, probably have it until the 27th. So. We won't have any additional ones on the, the agenda for next week to review. All right, uh, so with that, the, we do have one discussion item today. It is the non creds project proposal. I have seen uh, some comments coming through on the actual pull request and uh, Stephen has made updates as those have come in. Um, but at this point, I'm going to hand the floor to Stephen to see if he wants to take us through that or, uh, if he would like us just to start to comment on that. Okay, hang on a second. I was gonna, um, so we've, we've spent the last couple of weeks um, putting together the proposal. Uh, can I share screen? Of course, yes. Oh, oh, I see, I try, uh, <laughs> it's funny, I was trying to start my video as well. <laughs> We don't do that here. Okay, hang on. Um, let me move one more thing. Um, so let's see, there's the, um, this is largely, um, so we've been working on this as, as a community for the last uh, several weeks. So um, I presented um, about a month ago um, to the TOC, to the TSC then, to TOC now. Um, and um, since then have been soliciting, uh, soliciting input, um, putting together a, a skeleton proposal and then getting input from the community. Um, so what you're seeing here is that input um, converted over. Um, we have, it's, it's essentially, the um 
what I presented in a presentation uh, a month ago. Um, so I don't think you want me to repeat this presentation here with all of what is largely the same. I made a couple of tweaks to the slides just to provide updated data. Um, I do have a couple of updates since then. Um, we had, um, at the time I, I talked to this group, um, I we were just heading into the Rebooting Web of Trust um, conference. For those not familiar with that, Rebooting Web of Trust brings together um, a number of identity uh, people in the identity community um, and, and SSI community. It's Christopher Allen organizes it, so SSI is definitely the focus. At that, almost everybody um, that participates um, submits a proposed paper to work on at the conference. And um, at the start of the conference, um, the, the, the ones to be actually worked on are narrowed down to a, a smaller list um, of things that people want to work on. Um, and non-creds, um, despite the fact that um, in addition to the shirt I'm wearing that I, I got from the Hyperledger Global Forum, I managed to um, get COVID and so was not able to attend the uh, RWAT conference. The paper that I submitted did get worked on. Um, so that was very positive. Um, and, and so I worked um, sort of on the side on that, on, on another paper, but in the meantime, another group um, continued to work on the Anon Creds paper um, as I submitted it and, and continued to work on the specification and working on it. So that was really good. Um, a lot of progress was made actually there on the impact of ledger agnostic Anon Creds in this, and, and, and what is the genesis of this whole idea of moving Anon Creds out of Indy. Um, because an on creds can be used um, pretty easily, in fact, with um, different um, storage locations, publication um, locations. Um, so continued work on the ledger agnostic and on creds. We, we had a number of new contributors to the non cred specification itself. Um, so that was a really good um, uh, outcome from that. We uh, had, had um, a pile of new pull requests put in and and new contributors that are continuing to work on it. And as well, we came up with an approach for putting an on creds into the W3C verifiable credential standard data model. And this was somewhat of a surprise, was not expecting that, quite frankly, when I, when I talked to this group um, a month ago, um, that was not really on my agenda. We, we had some talks at the conference and discovered that wait, this isn't very difficult to do. And since then have um, implemented um, a first draft of that where um, basically taking it on creds um, as it stands today and just putting it into the W3C verifiable data credential um, data model such that it can be um, moved back and forth in either direction and, um, and yet still processed exactly the way an on creds is intended to work. So that, that's um, some exciting and interesting things that have happened even in the last month. Um, <clears throat> as I mentioned, creation and evolution of the HIP. Um, and then just gathering um, stated um, support for the proposal to move it on creds out of its own project. So those are the things that have happened since then. As I say, I've got this presentation that I, I gave um, a month ago and I, I suspect you don't want me to go through that again. I think everyone um, on the call was was at that previous meeting. So um, that's the material that I had thought of preparing, and um, I did get a number of comments from uh, from TOC members, and I appreciate that. Um, I think I've addressed them. The only one that I did not specifically add a level of detail to was the the question of link secrets. And I do have a slide here on link secrets if um, if we wanna talk about that and deep dive into that. Um, I just thought for the proposal, it's going quite deep into it. And and I, I'm happy to add it, but I, I didn't think it was necessarily appropriate for um, the proposal. So um, that's where I got to and, and we've got to as a community, so. Um, Looks like Nathan has, oh, Tracy, I'll turn it back to you and then let you handle the questions and, and organization. Sounds great. Thanks, Stephen. 
And thanks for uh, letting us know what's up, been updated and changed since we last spoke. Uh, Nathan. When this idea first came up, I was really worried about whether it would dilute some of the work going on in the community. And I think uh, Stephen deserves a lot of credit for all his work cultivating the contributor base on, on this proposal. If you look at who's said they're sponsoring or supporting, the list is a lot more extensive than I expected. And uh, uh, it, it just looks like it's setting up to be a really good improvement um, to take advantage of not only um, better decomposition of how you know all of the identity code is organized at Hyperledger, but also to, to help get more um, community contributors excited. So uh, thanks, Stephen, for all the, the great work on the, pr the proposal. I, I'm, I'm pretty excited about what I'm seeing here. All right, thanks, Nathan. And it definitely is an impressive list. Any comments or questions on the proposal? Peter? I was just curious, is, the, is there an implementation also that will move out of Indy or is it just to standard? Um, no, there is an implementation. Uh, so there's two implementations in Indy right now. Um, the plan is to take um, one of those, which is called, um, for lack of a better term, the developer named CredX. Um, and that will be basically what we'll do is we will split. Um, and I'm hoping someone knows the GitHub magic because we don't want to lose any history, but basically split a repo into two. One will remain with Indy and we'll have the Anon creds part of it removed. One will move to the Anon creds project should it be created and have the Indy parts removed. Um, so the history will hopefully be maintained in both. Um, and then we'll move forward um, with that, uh, with the two repositories. So the Anon creds is, um, as I said, it's already been used in a number of ways um, in a number of places to implement non-Indian on creds. And this will um, will then evolve that implementation to um, formalize the separation of the non creds processing, the implementation of the specification from the um, uh, storing and retrieving of an on creds objects from a, a verifiable data registry. So that's the that's the plan for the software. No, it's very much software. All right, Um, thanks, Tracy. Um, hey, Stephen. So thanks for addressing all the questions on the um, GitHub. And um, quick follow up on that. So and um, this proposal looks looks really good and. Um, this is kind of a project that would bring in more participation and it it aligns well with. Um, building those reusable components or building those pluggable components that would allow us to reutilize or um, give flexibility to cost, uh, the end users, right? And a uh, quick question on the implementation aspect. I know in the proposal you mentioned that um, the, there can be a closed source or open source, or, uh, uh, what do we call it? The components that deal with VDR, right? The, yeah. the, the VDR part, those can be either closed source or the open source parts. So within Hyperledger, you specifically mentioned about Fabric and Beso. And I'm just curious if you have identified uh, people who will be working on that, or is it um, that you'll be working with those Fabric and Beso teams in coming up with that solution? So how is that uh, in plan? Yeah, so um, the fab uh, a Fabric implementation has been done. So there's a member of the community, um, uh, a team um, that did a fabric implementation, um, again, just based on what was already in, in the library. So that's been implemented, but without benefit of the, the proper decomposition, if you will. So the expectation is um, that will be updated and modified. Um, the Ethereum one, quite frankly, is speculation um, that we came up with at, at our Watt, but there was a, a number of people talking there that, that speculated that um, 
Ethereum is likely a, uh, and particularly with the, the, the recent transition that, uh, that Ethereum had, that makes it a, a pretty good um, possibility of, of it. So that was more speculation, but, but my expectation is with the strong push right now in identity and, and the interest in identity, um, SSI style identity, decentralized identity and, and verifiable data, quite frankly, um, I think it is a, 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 a likely strong combination. So that is more speculative um, versus the fabric one where somebody has actually already done an implementation and it would be moving that implementation. Does that make sense? Got it. Yep. Thanks, Stuart. Yeah. And, and, more... and then, of course, there's people like Checked that have their own ledger. They're likely to put their implementation in their own repos. Um, Checked, I believe, is, is, is open source. So those will be open source ones. But I could envision others doing a proprietary one and and um and and that's the where the closed source might come in but but quite frankly that's for them to provide to people so that they can you make use of an on creds um on their platform if that's what they want to do got it um and probably i know um somewhere i remember reading in the proposal but just for completeness sake of this argument and um so there is Aries community also involved and uh, willing to adopt a non-cred. Yes, in absolutely. And, uh, um, Aries has most of the um, frameworks in Aries already have, not all, but most have a non-cred support. Um, and, and this change will be relatively minor, more or less it will be dependencies within um, within the frameworks themselves and so should not affect business logic and really is just um, part would be part of a minor upgrade um, for any of the Aries frameworks and that's the um, certainly the implementation plan and interest of the community. Thanks Steven and um, yeah all the best we're looking forward to it. All right thank you uh, Dana. So this is a bit more of a commentary than an actual question. This aligns with something that's happening in some of the Ethereum layer two spaces. They're calling a modular blockchain, breaking out these modules and reusing it everywhere. So in general, I view this as a positive development for the uh, for the identity space that there's a, a Lego brick you can plug in wherever you need that's consistent and reusable. So good job. Excellent, thank you. All right, any other comments or questions? on the proposal. Anybody have any objections that they would like to bring up or any concerns that they would like to bring up? Dana? I just want to uh, reconfirm. I think it is written out in the spec, but Indy will continue to function with non-creds and will be continue to be kept up to date with how non creds evolves and the APIs with it, correct? Absolutely, yes. Um, the idea here, we think, is by expanding, you know, the basic strategy from an indie perspective is by expanding the um, user base of a non creds by, by removing roadblocks from, from um, the adoption of, of a non creds. When people look around for, okay, where do we want to host our and on creds objects, Indy will be a an excellent choice. And so it's a sort of um, rising rising tide floats all boats um, uh, strategy from an Indy perspective. Okay. Any other comments, concerns? This is the opportunity before we uh, call for a vote. So if you do have anything that you're holding on to, hoping that uh, this is going to go on until next week, um, then now is your time to speak. The question about Ursa was raised, if it's a good time, um, if uh, I can talk to someone in Ursa team and help with reports, that 
I can help with reports, but only if I have enough data to actually help. Awesome. Okay, please contact me. I am Viktor Dubniavsky, okay. and I'll be available every day, essentially. Could you um, put your... Uh, oh, chat is disabled. Um, somehow yes. connect to me. <laughs> yeah, uh, use, the, use the Discord uh, TOC channel chat. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Steven, uh, I would uh, contact you, right? Yes. Sure. Okay. Good. All right, thanks, Victor. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any any final comments, questions, concerns, objections? Uh, anything that let's anything just do it. Bring up? Okay, I guess that's a, it's a. Are you uh, making a motion there or no? I am very much. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. All right, Arun, thanks for that. All right, so we're now voting to approve the non creds project uh, as a top level project within Hyperledger. Rai, did you wanna take us to a vote? Sure, uh, on the matter before the TOC, Angelo? Yes. Arno? Yes. Artem? I consent, yes. <laughs> Arun? Yes. Bobby? A hundred percent, yes. Okay, Dano? Yes, I like it. Uh, David? Yes. Uh, Grace is not here. Jim? I say yes for me. Okay, Cam Lesh? Uh, definitely yes. Nathan? Yes. Peter? Yes. Tracy? Yes. And Troy is not here, so, you know, it passes. Congratulations, Stephen. Awesome. All right. Well, that was uh, a lot quicker than I thought we'd go through things today. Uh, appreciate that, everybody, uh, for having reviewed that and came with your questions ready. Uh, I wish I had uh, prepared the, the presentation that I expect to have next week uh, for this particular agenda, but uh, we will uh, be talking with the Prune folks next week in the meeting. Um, so before we close out the call, any any other discussion items that we should talk about today? Everybody's just hovering over the leave button. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining today and we will meet again next week. Um, please take time to review the open reports that are out there and uh, have a good week. Thank you. Congrats, Thank you. Stephen.